Hey, what's up everyone? Sacred Prophet here. And today we're going to talk about transparency. So it's been a while I've been eager to talk about transparency because in my VTR model, my venture marketing model, transparency has been a hard thing to talk about. I mean, for V, for value, it's pretty straightforward. You expect a company to be able to solve a problem. They have a product or service, I need you to solve a problem. Okay, that's a no-brainer. Reputation, what they've, what they've done in the past, right? You need a nice track record of what they've done in the past in order to be able to assess the company. That makes sense. But transparency, when I talk about it to people, what is it that they, what is it they talk about all the, they always boil it down to uh, being honest. They need to be honest. You need to be corporate transparency. Know everything about the company. No, that's, that's not what transparency means. Transparency means you need to be able to predict what a company will do under different circumstances. And I have a list of uh, companies that do this very, very well, but I really wanted a good example of a company that did it poorly. And Robin Hood, <laughs> Robin Hood really gave it to me, Red. Robin Hood really gave it to me. Uh, I mean, you've been you've been following the story, right, with GameStop. I have. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you have. I, I mean, just in case people are watching this video <laughs> like uh, years from now, uh, GameStop just completely uh, has been like a a problem child on the market. And Robin Hood, this exchange app, this uh, this platform that really targets retail investors. Uh, to be able to trade easily without some big complicated interface has been at the, the center of this. They shut down all trading and prevented uh, people from being able to, <laughs> they prevented people from being able to buy any more GameStop shares. Not sell, just buy. It's so weird that their name is Robin Hood and they're doing like the opposite of the guy. That's exactly right. That's <laughs> exactly right. So uh, Robin Hood, uh, you look, I have been wanting a, a, a clear example a, of a company that just really poop the bed here and they did a great job so i figured okay let's take a look what what this means right so transparency like i said doesn't mean that the company is completely honest just that you be, you're able to predict what they'll do under various circumstances so um uh, let me let me take you on a journey here let's uh, let's go to um well here, here's the thing let's go to uh, desktop left so the whole thing with uh, robin hood is that they talk about commission-free investing right now whenever you hear about um whenever you hear about free in any business context, in any marketing material, you, you have to automatically be wary, right? Free, who's in, who's in business to be free? I mean, the government still wants their money. Some company wants to be free? No, free means you're the product. Free means that something's happening behind the scenes that you're not aware of. So as soon as you see free, that's a problem. And this has come up a lot. People have been talking about how uh, Robinhood is actually doing all these things on the side and actually get money. They're not really there for the people. They're not really free or they're, they're talking about free is deceptive. It's silly. If we take a look at, um, different brokerage firms, right? They all say free, right? If we take a look at uh, TD Ameritrade, they're free commission, free trading. If we look at Fidelity, they're commission, free trading. I mean, they're all, they're all the same. They're all Charles Schwab's are, they're all free, right? So that, uh, that doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? What matters is that if Fidelity or E-Trade or any of these other companies screw you, you're like, well, what do I expect? You're a brokerage company. Right? Mm. That's, you're like, it's just par for the course. But Robinhood went out of the gate. They're all about <laughs> we're there on your side and we're trying to democratize, democratize the financial system so that people are just like you and me can get in and make theirs. And as soon as it turned out that the, uh, you know, Robin Hooders were making more money or bankrupt in certain hedge funds, that's it. They put the kibosh on it. So um, here's the thing. So when I'm uh, uh, analyzing a company, I always think to myself, all right, um, how is it that they make money? Mm -hmm. Like, if you don't know how a company makes money, there's no way for you to really get to the transparency question, right? You, you need to know the the... the Money is there, the life breath of the company. It doesn't matter how noble they are. If they're not making any money, they're not going anywhere. So, uh, look, there are better people than me who can explain how Robin Hood makes their money, but l let's take a look. Just for, for context, let's, uh, let's go on center screen here and have somebody explain it better than I can. <laughs> <clears throat> let's go. Get hyphy. Get hyphy. Get hyphy. Right. <laughs> What's going on, guys? My name is Connor Polifron, and welcome back to the Boiler Room. 
Today, we're gonna to talk about the three ways that Robinhood makes money. Now, this has been a very controversial topic in which I am going to kind of cover today. So the three ways that Robinhood makes money, first is through Robinhood Gold. So that's just their margin account. That's uh, Robinhood Gold allows, um, uh, you, you know the difference between a margin account and a cash account. Margin, you can take out credit at the brokerage firm and you're able to, uh, the, you pay interest on it and you're able to, to buy more shares than you could have otherwise. Is just, it like a credit card type thing on your, um, I guess exactly you're it. buying, you're yeah. trading? Yeah, think of it as a credit card or line of credit on your on your account. So let's get past that guy. So the, uh, the second way, if you can find it here, and all of that uninvested cash sitting within those Robinhood accounts is being invested on Robinhood's behalf, earning a little bit of interest along the way. way. All right, so that's the second way. The, it's uh, the money that people put into their Robinhood account mm -hmm. um, is lent out. Robinhood is able to lend that out and earn interest on that. In fact, they had this whole fiasco where uh, they, were, they, they were saying they're gonna provide 3% interest on people, I mean, this back in the day when, when people were making zero point something percent interest on their savings account, right? Are, are they allowed to do that? That's yeah. like what banks are supposed to do, that's, right? That's exactly why. Well, that's exactly why you flopped. I mean, how you, how are you going <laughs> to regulate it, right? The whole thing is that you put your money instead of uh, instead of a bank, and then if there's anything that goes wrong, um, uh, there's uh, FD, FDIC protection, mm -hmm. there's insurance and all that, so that you can get your money back, or you could, you know, maybe get your money back. But this didn't have any of that. Plus, you have to do some pretty high risk stuff if you're giving three percent, three percent to people. Mm -hmm. um, and so the third way that they that they make money is this thing that everyone's talking about now. So when you think about it, that's a lot of money. High frequency trading companies, it allows, and what they're doing is they're selling your order flow. Now every time they sell your order flow to these high frequency trading companies. It allows these high frequency trading companies to see what you want to purchase before you purchase it. So let's give you an example. I am the investor. Yeah, yeah, shocked is the, what? the appropriate that, response. That, that's the sketchiest thing I've ever heard of. Like well, they're selling your information. Yes, it, this is not, so it's sketchy because first of all, all these brokerage firms do this, Yeah. right? Because what happens is that the, uh, normally your, um, your order has to go to the exchange Right, okay. to the New York Stock Exchange or something like that. It finds the uh, the the best bid and then um, sends it back to you in order to fill it. Mm -hmm. Now, normally back in the day before com computers, people would you know you have to call someone and run across and actually get buy a share from someone else and you know buy buy sell sell. You I know, saw that in the movies. Exactly. <laughs> um, but then as computers um, uh, came to play, the it it became this thing where the faster you can execute your orders, the the better you mm -hmm. can get filled and the the better price you can get. Right. And so um, you've probably even heard how people how uh, there are these companies, these uh, program training companies that try to get as close to the New York Stock Exchange as possible in order to have their transactions get there a fraction of a second faster so that they can get uh, they can get filled better. Yeah. So what happens is that because so many people are in these uh, brokerage firms or um, or ETFs like Vanguard ETFs or whatever, when someone wants to place an order, if someone's on Robinhood and there's 100,000 people trading, well, instead of sending the uh, the order to the New York Stock Exchange, they could send it to a market maker mm. faster. Mm -hmm. And that market maker can make the trade internally with the people at, in Robinhood or in, oh. in, an internal group, which should happen faster, right? You don't have to pay the fees of transacting at the, um, the New York Stock Exchange or anything like that. And so it's supposed to facilitate liquidity, right? You can have a lot more sh trades happen, happen there than actually happen at the uh, This at is the why they can afford to not have charges for each trade. It reduces it, exactly. Mm. Now, here's the shady part, right? Well, you, you just heard him talk about it. We'll listen a little bit more and then sure. we'll get back. Yes, sir, and I am using Robinhood and I would like to purchase 100 shares of Apple. When I go to purchase my 100 shares of Apple and I swipe up, in that time that my order is processing, electronically that data is then sent very fast to these different high frequency trading companies. These high frequency trading companies get to see what it is that you would like to purchase. And since these companies have so much money and they've built these extremely expensive, fast, high frequency trading computers, 
these computers know what you want to purchase before you purchase it. So what do they do? They go and purchase the shares right before you purchase it and then they sell them to you. And that is exactly what order flow selling is. That's right. That's what? exactly right. Exactly. That, that's like, oh my gosh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. And so the, the argument here is that what happens is that when they go purchase that share and sell it to you, yeah. they sell it for a little bit more than they bought it for. Right? It okay, could be a penny, a, a fraction of a mm. penny. And you'll actually hear a lot of these uh, these these companies um will talk about, oh it's a it's a fraction of a penny. Uh Robin Hood on their on the, on their site, what is it? Um if you go to go to the center screen here mm -hmm. on the Robin Hood blog where because they never they, they didn't have it on their blog before how they actually earn money. You have to like dig really? inside of it in order to figure out what, what they do. So uh, the CEO, the co founder, uh, wrote a letter, <laughs> an open letter basically to explain what, what they do. So you have down here, they say, um, uh, what is it? That they make uh, 0. 0.00026 um, dollars mm -hmm. on uh, every transaction. So let's say on a $100 transaction, Robinhood earns uh, 2.6 cents uh, from the market maker, right? Mm. It's nothing, right? It's uh, it's peanuts. It's, it's just a couple of cents, you know? Well, uh, that, you know, that's, that's the gimmick. But you do that um, on billions of dollars mm. on uh, hundreds of millions of trades where you're making tons of money these Absolutely. people aren't aren't in it for kicks right and so i mean we've said what is it office space they made that uh, that that movie there where uh, they they found out that a bank account had a fra uh, when this bank was doing trades or doing transactions they had a uh, a fraction of a pennies that were these remainders that kept being thrown off on the side by the c computer program and so this guy he he had he had a bank account that instead of going nowhere, those mm -hmm. fractions of a penny would go to his his bank account, and he made millions and millions and millions. I saw of this dollars. movie. Oh, I, I thought you might have seen Office Space. We didn't see it together, but I thought it was like a known thing. I think it's Office. Space. I've never heard of this. Well, it's based on a true thing. This is okay. some, something that someone actually did. Super illegal, but what did you do? Embezzlement, but on it's, a tiny scale. It's also, I mean, they want as many trades as possible, especially if they're offering free trades. They're encouraging as many trades as possible exactly. so they can be scraping this in like the minutia amount exactly from right. like many, many, many exactly. trades. Now, you can imagine that the people who are uh, customers of Robinhood, they don't know this. They hear the pitch that Robinhood came out of here because Robinhood was born out of the financial crisis of 2007, mm. 2008, and they wanted to, to um, give power back to the, the little, little guy. Little people, yeah. No, these two guys came from high frequency trading and they figured out, oh my God, there's a way of doing this because the other high frequency traders, they, you know, it's all like Mishigosh over there. It's like mm. um, old systems that can okay. be updated, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so just to get you up to speed, the free <laughs> ain't free, and Robinhood was totally. Um, suckering people in not suckering people in but getting people in and people thought that mm -hmm. these people were working on the, on their behalf i mean they called the company yeah that, that's Hood, yeah that to me that's the biggest uh that's right kind of lie at this point that's right so fast forward a couple of years we're in the situation and they side with the big guys they side with the market makers in order to um in order to to screw the little guy out of uh, their, their game stop GameStop, money, yeah right? they're they're their meme money, their meme stock money. Okay, <laughs> so if we take a look, uh, let's see here. Um, all right, so I want to, I want you to hear from, I want you to hear from uh, the CEO, the co-founder. Okay, of of Robinhood. Of Robinhood, um, and you tell me now <laughs> if this person comes off as transparent and trustworthy. Oh my all gosh! Right? All right, we're gonna watch this whole thing. It's gonna be on the right. Okay, here we go. I know that there's rumors around that, um, you know, we were directed by market makers or other market participants to do this. And I want to be 100% clear. Do this. He's talking about uh, um, about uh, preventing people from being able to buy any GameStop stock. Right. Only to, to sell. only to be able to yeah, sell. He's being called out on, uh, huh. on CNN. Um, this decision was not made on the direction of any market maker or uh, other market participants. Listening to that with us, Dave Portnoy, the founder of Barstool Sports, to say he's been vocal. Okay. So Dave Portnoy weighs in on this. You know Dave Portnoy, the uh, the guy who's... Um... He's the leftist guy, right? No, no. He's, he's the, a different he, guy? He's a coronavirus thing hit. There was no more sports, so he moved from sports thing, uh, gambling to stock trading. Oh, he's the, he's the crypto guy. No, no. Oh, he just, oh, he's the guy who sits at his computer and he buys all stocks and he'll use <gasps> them randomly. He's and... the one that Keith hates. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> okay. yeah, right. Keith McCullough. Um, <laughs> uh, a lot of people find him obnoxious. I, mean, I, I think I follow stick. him on Twitter. 
Yeah, I mean, we all do. We all sort I of. I just have get to. them all. Conf- all these like guys, they all look the same to Pretty me. Sure, I could. <laughs> so, um, uh, he he, uh, you know, he couldn't be any. He couldn't be more of the people. This yeah, guy is. He's like, the everyman. He's the everyman. Yeah. So. Uh, listen to him talk about uh, this. Now he doesn't know. You know he's no expert in it. He's just been in this uh, in this stock trading business for several months now. <laughs> he, he has this thing to say. All right. All right, let's hear it. Cool opponent of Robin Hood's actions is an understatement, but we like those. Dave, great to have you back with us. What angered you most about what happened yesterday? Well, I mean, they, they basically, the name of the company is Robin Hood, steal from the rich, give to the poor, and they did the exact opposite. Yeah. They stole from the poor and gave back to the rich. I uh, unequivocally don't believe what he just said, Vlad. I think he's lying about that. Uh, there's just no rational explanation on why they would do what they did without outside pressure, interference. They had to know what they did was against all their clients. Their clients were the ones who were making money and they basically cratered the stock on purpose. So I I, I just don't believe anything that guy says. I wanted to take a cold shower after seeing him say that. (laughs) All right, so what comes up up in all these videos when people talk about it is this idea of betrayal, right? Betrayal. And betrayal is if you're dealing with a, a shady company and they behave in a shady way, you expect it. Right? I mm. use this example all the time. If you're going to buy uh, something uh, that usually costs $100 for $14, you're not surprised when it breaks. You just buy two of them. It's <laughs> <Yeah>. fine. <laughs> you're, you're not surprised about that. But if you buy something for $100 and it uh, it breaks, well, now you're, now you're pissed off. So the uh, wh- wh- it, it's so important that if someone is going to – if you're going to uh, if you want to be a good employee, if you want to uh, be a good CEO, you want to uh, run a good business – Whatever you project as your image, whatever you project as this is how you will decide to behave in the future, um, you got to be consistent with that. And if you're not consistent with that, you got to front run it. You got to let people know you're changing the way, you're changing the measure for how you're going to behave in the future, and uh, you can't violate that in any way. I mean, it, it's just like in any in a friendship or a relationship, right? You can have those those things where someone in a in a relationship, um, you know let's say someone becomes born again Christian all of a sudden, right? And uh, that's not what their dynamic was before. Uh, that's perfectly fine. People can grow and change, but they need to be able to announce to the other people in the, in the relationship that this is how they're going to make decisions in the future. Mm-hmm. And that's what transparency is. Transparency is making sure that your clients can anticipate that under multiple different circumstances, how you will behave in the future. Does that make sense? Totally. I, I'm also wondering if there's like a part now where you're going to be telling me that there's something about you that you want to let me know in advance. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. I, you know. I mean, we're going to have. The, I'm very open. We're going to have the conversation eventually, but just not on the end, you know. <laughs> All right. Well, that's all I'm going to talk about today. Uh, Robin Hood, great example for transparency. I'm going to do a little bit more on them in the future. Um, and you know, when you're you're going to be dealing with another business, you make sure. You read the fine print as a, you know, what is it that I think they're going to do in the future? Then pay attention to that. Um, I don't think it was fine print. This was their name. Their name was Robin Hood. They kind of violated everything about the persona that they tried to put out. That's right. And now E-Trade is getting a bunch of other <laughs> and new people who jumped off of uh, Robin Hood onto the new brokerage platforms. Mm-hmm. And those brokerage platforms are not making any promises about anything. Yeah. They are saying, we want money and we'll take it. If you'll give it to us. I would much rather deal with somebody who was honest about wanting to make a buck off of me than someone who said they were all nice and then betrayed me, essentially. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. All right. Well, I'll be back soon. Real soon. Probably tomorrow, even. With more. (laughs) I'm Sacred Prophet. This is my lovely wife, Melissa Hartman. (laughs) (laughs) And we will be back. Next time you have something to teach me. I really screwed up the ending of this here, right? It's okay, because you look really cute, so (laughs) I like it anyway. (laughs) All right, well...